This week, AMD's high-end cards get a price cut, Intel's Skylake has some stability issues, Intel releases a crazy fast Xeon chip and more. I'm David Wolf with Tech Power Up News. AMD's R9 Nano is getting its first price cut in the US. The card is dropping down to 499 American dollars, down a huge 150 bucks from the previous 649. This places the Nano alongside the similarly performing but much less efficient R9 Fury, naturally making it the better value between the two. Meanwhile, the R9 Fury X is down a total of 50 bucks from 649 to 599. Guess the price can't drop too much or it'd just be in the Nano range. The price changes are naturally supposed to offer better competition with NVIDIA's own GTX 980 and 980 Ti cards. It's pretty interesting that the Nano is getting a price drop after only four months on the market, though I guess it did arrive on the scene fairly late in the game. Though if you're looking for a snazzy crossfire setup, Dual Nanos is now $300 cheaper. That's a whole R9 390. Everybody's been talking about the return of the Gigahertz race with the announcement of Intel's latest Broadwell-based Xeon chip. It's clocked at a crazy 5.1 gigahertz. Jeez. The chip is functionally a quad-core, though it is a total of eight, half of them being disabled. It's rated at 165 watt TDP and includes 10, 10 megabytes of L3 cache, quad-channel DDR4 support all on the socket LGA 2011 version 3. I'm curious to see what would happen if one were able to unlock those extra cores. Power consumption would likely be kind of nuts if it were stable at all to begin with. I want to see what would happen if you played some friggin' games on that thing. I know it's not meant for gaming, but it's friggin' 5.1 gigahertz qu friggin' quad. Let's go. Pre-built PC sales numbers in quarter 4 2015 aren't looking so hot. From the fourth quarter a year prior, sales dropped by a hefty 10.6% to 71.9 million total units shipped, down from 80.4 million. 2015 was also the first year that shipments for the whole year dipped below 300 million since 2008 during the financial crisis. Oh boy. Recent economic downturns largely affected sales, like weakening international currencies, for example. A couple, a, a, couple, a couple companies had some tiny growth in quarter four over the previous year. The biggest growth being, of course, Apple's at 2.8% because it's Apple. Hopefully all this means that people are finally adopting preference for building their own PC. And it's not just signs of a fading market. Probably is. While tablets and similar devices may dominate the mainstream more and more, I feel there will always be the need for these big, wonderful desktops to do all your work. Like edit this video right now. I mean, I couldn't do this front of my freaking iPad. iPad does the words on the screen. <laughs> Here's some news that affects Skylake users and prospective buyers. Intel recently confirmed when responding to a question on their support page that their line of Skylake CPUs suffers from a bug causing the chips to freeze. When the chips are subject to certain heavy and specific workloads, like Prime 95, the system will hang and act or act unpredictably. Intel announced they recognize the problem and have issued a fix. Seeing as the bug is with highly specific instances like Prime95, which is used really to test overclock stability, it's interesting to see Intel be so ready to offer a fix. For a few years it was clear they weren't too keen on customers overclocking their chips, preferring we all just buy the highest clock chip we could for whatever money and shut up, aside from, of course, Kate's chips with unlock multipliers. With recent news from just weeks ago about BCLK, Overclocking becoming a thing, maybe Intel is kind of letting go of the leash a little bit. That's all the news I have for this week, but there's more every week, so stick around. Also, make sure to check out our website, and you'll find lots of great articles on stuff I talked about today and other stuff, like EVGA announces the Z170 Classified K motherboard, AMD announces Opteron A1100 Series 64-bit ARM processors for the data center, Intel reports full-year revenue of $55.4 billion, quarter four revenue of $14.9 billion, and more. I understand that with just a few minutes of news, you won't get all the info that you need, or you might have a question. Why don't you head on over to our forums and ask us that question? There's plenty of helpful people around to help you out. Did you watch this video and think, hey, I want gaming news? If I got the channel for you, head on over to our sister channel, Next Power Up. They've got awesome game reviews and weekly gaming news. Clicky, clicky.